Hey, Mike with Mike's Bags. For today, I am reviewing the Snapper by Nola Bags. And I must say, this slow side material, I have received more questions about this over the last month, month and a half, than I have any material probably in the last year. It really does draw a lot of attention. It, 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 it's, it's very intriguing. It piques my curiosity as well as a lot of you guys. So let's go ahead and dive in. Let's break the Snapper down, and I'll tell you what I learned about this bag and what I think of it. Let's start with this slow side material. This is a unique material. This is the only bag I've ever seen it on, the only time I've ever felt this material. It's a hybrid material. It is, it's a thick material. I will say when I first got these bags brand new, I didn't like them. This material is super thick. The fast side's a really thin pliable material. So you got to really contrast in the feels of the two materials. And I didn't like that. Now, I have since thrown these bags a ton. I throw outdoors on concrete. They've gotten dirty. They've gotten beat up. And this material has, it's it's still thick. Like I'm not going to change the thickness, but, but it's, it's actually loosened up some to the point where I actually, I don't mind the way it feels. It, it for, Oddly enough, even though the two materials are different, they feel similar enough that I don't have a problem with the feel of the bags. Now, I will say, this material being thick, I don't think it's ever going to really loosen up become a super floppy material. All right, this bag has some flop to it, but I think it's always going to have some structure. It's always going to have a little bit of stiffness because of this thicker material. And for those of you who don't like a floppy bag, this is something to get because I don't think I'll ever get that floppy. Also, because this is a bag, and I'll get more in that in a moment, but this bag is designed for playing that shot shaping game, the cuts, rolls, flops. I think the stiffest of material really lends to... The, the shot shaping and really aids in being able to, to play that style of game better because it doesn't get that floppy. So, and I'll get more into that here in a moment. Speeds on this, I, I'm gonna call this a four and a half speed. And 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 here's why, is a couple of reasons. One, I, I think it plays faster. To me, it plays faster than that, that Viking carpet or that Pro Advantage carpet. Both those materials, I think play about a four speed. This plays a touch faster than those. And I think it plays slower than that Surefire Slow Side or that Linen Slow Side of the Psycho X or even like the R Carpet, the Clone Carpet. Those play like a five, five and a half. I think it plays slower than that. So you put it between the four and five, it's probably a four and a half speed on, in, on my scale. Now, NOLA just released these the other day, and I think they call it a five to six speed on the Slow Side on, on their side. And, and look, speeds are very subjective. I'm not saying that NOLA's wrong at, at all when I give a different speed rating because there's so many things that go into the to the speed of a bag. It's, it's how you break the bags in. Like I said, I play outdoors. Bags get dirty. They get beat up. They play a little slower. My boards may be slower than theirs. The, the conditions I play in are different. My throw style is different than, than other people. So, you know, there's so many things that go into a factor that speed, speeds are very subjective. So for me, it's a four and a half on my scale, but a four and a half on my scale, maybe a five and a half on NOLA scale. We may be we may be saying the same thing speed wise, if, it, if that makes sense. So just understand that speeds are subjective. So we're going to four and a half, five and a half is, is, is the speed of this material. I, I, I call them stick with the four and a half speed on that. Fast side, this is the, I'm pretty sure this is the fast side that Octane uses on the carbon. It's like an eight and a half, nine speed material. It's fast. It's great for pushing, collecting, cleaning up a lot of the messes, pushing through multiple bags. Both, this fast side is very hole friendly. And this whole side, if for being a controllable material is... Is more hole friendly than I expected it to be. It really surprised me on that day. And you'll see here some bags are dripped in the hole that probably normally wouldn't with a with a with a Viking or a Pro Vange, a little bit slower material. So I was impressed with the hole friendliness of this, but all in all, it's a pretty hole friendly bag. The the template on here, it's a medium template, it's a medium amount of fullness, a medium amount of flop. Like I said, the stiffness of that slow side, you're never gonna get very floppy on it. So you've got just the right amount of flop on here. I, I like it. I like the overall. I like the I like the fill, which is a mixed fill. It's it's I don't know the ratio, but it's got beads in here. It's got some flat fill. I don't I didn't feel any flat discs in here, but it has that flat fill, that thicker flat fill, and then the regular beads, which I love. If you've watched my reviews, you know I like a mixed fill. I like more of a bead fill. I I, I tend to find them to be more whole friendly, and I think that aids into the whole friendliness of this bag, and and it also aids in the ability to to shape shots, to cut and roll and flop, that the, this bag has some movement, has some hop, has some bounce to it, which makes it easier for those shot shaping type throws. Now, I will say on the negative side that with that with that bouncier, more active fill and you get this material, this bag does kick on you. It is going to kick. So if you don't throw a flat bag, you have to tilt to it. The bag's going to kick. It's controllable, which means if you have the consistent tilt, the same tilt either way on the bag, you can play that kick because you can just adjust your landing spot. No problem whatsoever. But that kick, I've always said, uh, the kick is, a, is an unintentional cut. So if the bag's kicking on you, it's also going to cut on you. And so the, the the positives to me of the ability to throw cut shots outweighs the the negatives of the kick, if that makes sense. The other thing I'll send is this bag is ACL stand for 2024. This does have the comp stamp on it. And I've said it before. I will say it again real quick, and I won't go into a big rant. But from for, for pretty much everyone of you watching this review, you can throw a comp stamp bag in any ACL of it. It doesn't matter. It, ACL opens, locals, regionals, whatever. You can throw a comp stamp bag. And a comp stamp does not mean it's a lower quality bag. It, it, there's no difference in quality from comp to pro. It's just a money thing of the bag companies 
paying because if they have pro sponsor players throwing the bags in pro only events it's just a handful of events each year they have to have a pro stamp bag for those players if you have any questions feel free to reach out but if you're watching this review I, I, you're probably able to throw a, a comp stamp bag if you don't know you can throw a comp stamp bag in any event so anyway acl stamp for 2024 season it's going to put the playability on this bag and to me this is a bag designed for more of that dirty style control game blockers you know cuts rolls flops and then cleaning up at the end i think that's where this bag really shines you can you can run this back hole for hole, especially if you're a harder thrower or if you play on faster boards. I think you can run this back hole for hole. I, I think there are better bags out there for that, though. To me, this bag is designed for that dirty style game because the, you have control. Like this bag has, I, I felt like I could put a blocker anywhere I want on the board. I just felt like I had the control here, put the blocker wherever I wanted, and then I had the ability to clean it up later, like the collected. You know, it's not a floppy bag. So when you go to collect, you're just clipping a corner. You don't, you know, it's not going to accordion up. You can just clip a corner, take it in. And you'll see here, you know, I had bags that probably shouldn't have been collectible. Bags off the side that I was able to bring back in. Sometimes it took multiple bags, but I never felt like a bag that was short of the hole. I never felt like it was out of play. Like I felt like with this bag, wherever the bag was on the board, as long as it wasn't past the hole, I felt like I could collect it and put it in. I didn't collect them all. I missed a few, but just, it just gave me that confidence to know that I can do it. And I collected bags that I probably shouldn't have. So I think it really, a lot of that has to do with the, with the control that I have of throwing cuts. You can step out and kind of throw a cut and bring it back in. You can throw a cut across the board, clip a bag and pull it back in, you know? And I, I think that shot shaping that, that it doesn't take, like, like it doesn't take a lot to get this bag to cut. It doesn't take a lot to get this bag to roll or flop. So that leads to, to be able to not just get around bags, but also bring bags back into play. And there are bags that maybe were, should have been out of play. I was able to pull them back in with a, with a bag or two, and by the third bag, bring them in. Plus, if I'm playing an opponent, there are more bags being thrown, which would actually make that even more possible if I'm bringing bags into play. And you know, when I talk about collecting bags and, and how collectible bag is, sometimes it's not always bringing the bag back into the hole. Like if I throw a blocker up there on my opponent's side and they come and bully out of the way, my next bag, if I'm able to spin that bag back into the to their lane, that's to me, that's collecting the bag. I collect the bag back into where I wanted it. Not necessarily in the hole, but I brought it back into where I originally wanted it or put it back into play. Or if I throw a blocker and I'm, I miss my landing zone and a little off, my next bag, if I'm able to clip a corner and spin it back around, that's part of the collectability to me. Like, like not not every bag is designed to collect and pull that bag in the hole. Not every bag is designed to go in the hole. It's it's, it's part of, you know, can I bring that bag back into a position where it's going to either be collectible the next time or it's going to be an obstacle for my opponent and maybe force them to make a mistake? And that's when I talk about collectability. But I had a blast with throwing this bag as far as my style of game because I love throwing blockers. I love throwing cut shots. And I, I, I go left to right, right to left. And I was just able to do that so much this bag. Like I said, it just I had fun. And it really gives you options if you're playing and you've got bags on the board. With a bag like this, you have so many options of how to get around those bags or how to go through those bags. Fast side, you can flip it over and you can easily push and collect whatever you need to, to to get those bags in the hole. And I also say that 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 around the hole, you know, the, the bags are not that floppy. I talk about the stiffness. So forgiveness, you know, you'll see here is if I'm off left or right and I don't get enough of the bag to grip that hole and just a corner goes by, it's going to spin over and kind of miss the hole. But if I get enough up there to, to dip in, it'll grab a split, spin around and usually it drips right back in. If it does it, it hangs there. It wasn't that hard to collect. I didn't have to get crazy aggressive for most of them. Now, there were a few times I went for airmail drags, and that's because bags were just barely at the hole and probably shouldn't have been able to collect them. But I think because of the stiffness, when you hit that bag, it, it, the core is not dipped in. It's sticking out. So when you hit it, it causes the bag to flip up more. I felt like it's, if I could just clip that bag with airmail, it was going to collect it easier than, say, some other looser, floppier bags would. Maybe it's just me, but I just felt like that throwing it. So anyway, I had a blast on the I really did it. When I first picked these bags up brand new, I was hesitant to think that I was going to like these. The more I threw them, the more I really, really fell in love with them. And, and I, I I think if you play a dirty style game, if you play a shot shaping game, if you cut, you roll, you flop, if that's part of your game, and if you throw a fairly flat bag or consistently a flat bag, I think the snapper is something you're really going to love, you're really going to enjoy. So you definitely want to check it out. Leave me an availability. NOLA has a website, nolabags.com. be a link down in the description for you guys. Like I said, just released the bags a few days ago. Um, I, as of recording this video, there were still some in stock. Hopefully it'll be in stock if you guys are looking to buy some. But if you're looking, you might want to go quickly just to make sure in case they do sell out. The bags were $65 for a set of bags. And it was, it was 10 bucks shipping if I got the right. $75 shipped to you is a phenomenal price. It's on the cheaper end. And you're getting a high quality bag at that. So definitely check them out if you're interested. If, this, if any of this, this sounds like a bag you're going to like, give them a run. Go get yourself a set. If you've thrown them or if you get a set when you do throw them, I'd love to hear your feedback. Let me know what you like, what you don't like. Always love hearing guys' opinions. I thank you so much for the support, and I thank you for watching.